two days worth. Gonna pack up into a drainage. We think there's some bull elk. And uh, we, uh, we seen a really big one and in there about a week ago. So we'll find out if he's still there. It'd be the second time we've done this. So we had a six point and it just got a little dark on calling him, but it wasn't the bull at the time we wanted to shoot anyway. So we'll find out how it goes. This is our uh, couple days we'll be staying here at least overnight tonight, maybe two nights. We're about two hours in. This is going to give us the advantage of going up hunting these bulls right up here. Uh, we can't come down on them. The wind's wrong and the, uh, the terrain's really steep on that top. We know if we kill one, we could take it out this bottom and it's been a nasty trail in here and I've been clearing it through four trips of clearing this trail out so you know hopefully it works out if not we'll find another spot but I, I got a couple elk trails right here and I know there's a lot of black bear in here too I'd hate to have one of them step on me in the middle of the night so hopefully we're off the trail a little bit and uh, I'm thinking the elk are going to be on a, the north facing knob right up here and it's a pretty good elkish area so we'll see what happens.
Well, another bull bugle in, but another small one. Came in uh, using a thunder bugle. I've uh, been bugling with uh, pretty aggressive and decided to switch onto the thunder bugle. And sure enough, uh, about 20 minutes later, switched onto this and called the bull right in. Uh, few cow calls, a few thunder bugles come up here, set up, 10 yards, you know. It's, we got a little bit of time left in the season, so I passed him. Uh, to me, uh, it doesn't really make a difference whether it's a small six point or a four point, a meat bull's a meat bull. Right now we're looking for something a little bigger, you know, it's just, I guess it's an excuse to hunt longer or play Russian roulette with your tag, but, uh, We'll just uh, keep on hunting, and I enjoy hunting, so to me, uh, passing up a 7x8 was probably the most difficult thing I've ever done, uh, elk hunting-wise, And but, you know, I, I wanted to spend some time hunting this country, and, you know, I've seen a lot of bulls, and I got a, I got a, a little bit of time left, so we'll just find out what happens. Go look for another bull. With only a few days left in Oregon season, Glenn has located several bulls in a canyon. Not wasting any time, he has closed the gap. The most important part of your hunt is after you release that arrow and it's hit the animal. What I try to do is I want to listen real quick and I want to take mental note of the last place I saw that animal run. A lot of times these bulls are going to run so far and they're going to stop and they're going to fall down, they're going to crash against a tree, they're going to roll down the hill or something in a steep terrain. You know, that could be a big difference. Good thing is, is he he died right here. And it's all about the experience, and this is what it's all about of uh, being able to, to hunt quite a bit in a season and be successful 
whether you kill some or not, it's just the amount of being out here and uh, calling some bulls, hearing bulls, it's just a terrific time. Glenn was able to arrow this great bull on the 24th of September.